Welcome to the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, uh, bringing you this week's episode. I want to clarify first off something. Uh, This will not be the last episode. we got one more episode to go for the grand finale of this series. So apologies, it will actually be on uh, Wednesday. Um, and then we'll get back to normal uh, schedule Sunday when we'll, we, we're starting a new, new series on Sunday uh, rather than Wednesday, which to me generally makes a little more sense. Um, I want to encourage you to check out Laser and Sword magazine. Where Monday we're going to have another exciting uh, episode in the separation uh, story, uh, building up to kind of some interesting double crosses going on among the superheroes. Uh, follow that over at lasersword.adamsweb.us. Uh, got any comments on the show, feel free to email me, adam at adamsweb.us. And please cast your vote for our show at podcastalley.com. Also, I want to encourage you, if you're interested in general old-time radio, subscribe to my Dragnet podcast. Uh, you can do that. Put Dragnet in an iTunes search engine. It'll come up as one of the top two results, the old-time Dragnet show with... Adam Graham. Uh, we continue to get new listeners. I encourage you to go to dragnet or go to dragnetradio.blogspot.com as well. But without any further ado, let's get into the nitrate shipment, part eight. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. When we last saw Kent, he and Jimmy Olsen were being held at gunpoint in the cabin of a foreign agent aboard a ship loaded with nitrate bound from Panama to the United States. With them are two English passengers, Dr. Michael Barrington and his daughter, June. The ship is to be sunk at midnight, and as time passes, Kent realizes that in order to save the lives of all on board, he will have to assume the role of Superman, even though it means revealing his double identity. Then suddenly, a ray of hope gleams. Young Pug Flanagan, forgotten in the excitement, has gone to the captain with a report that Kent and Jimmy are missing, and that something strange is going on aboard the ship. But the foreign agent, leaving his henchman Hans to guard our friends, has followed Pug to the captain's quarters disguised as an elderly lady. Listen... Someone is knocking at the door. Good evening, Captain. Buenas noches, senor. Oh, there you are. Oh, me? Yes. Uh, we have been uh, looking for you. We are having a little party in my cabin. Mr. Kent is there and Jimmy. Well, I'll be. We sent one of the waiters to find you, but he said you refused to come. You see, it is nothing at all. You mean to say Mr. Kent and Jim are in your cabin? Uh-huh. We are having a lovely time. Won't you join us? Oh, sure, but why didn't the waiter tell me instead of getting tough? Oh, he probably didn't understand. Doesn't make any sense to me, but I suppose it's okay. I'm sorry I bothered you. Guys. It is not. Good night, Captain. Buenas noches, senora. Buenas noches. Mr. Kent and Jimmy will be very happy to see you. How long have they been in your cabin? Oh, just a short time. Kind of late to be holding a party? Oh, no, no, not on board ship. We we plan to have a big blowout at midnight. A very big blowout. Hmm. Sounds like a storm coming up. Yes, it does. Now, I must be careful going down these steps. I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, I'll help you, lady. Oh, thank you. Take it easy. That's it. Oh, you're a perfect little gentleman. <laughs> Ah, there we are. Well, my cabin is at the end of this corridor. Wait a minute. Why, something the matter? Yeah, plenty. You ain't no dame. What do you mean? Just what I said. You're just wearing them clothes to make out you're an old lady. What in the world are you talking about? Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. I had to hold your arm coming down and step. You've got muscles like a man. And I know how to use them, too. Let go of me. Not this time. Oh, no. Oh, kick me, will you? Yeah, here's another one. Stop. Uh, two guys like you me. Uh, come back here. You will get away. That's what you think. Go ahead. When I get my hands on you. Don't make me 
way. He was right. Can't run in this outfit. Well, it just means speeding things up a little. Pants, open. You found him? Close the door. Well, I found him, but he got away. Oh, boy. You won't be so happy in a short while. Go up on deck, Hans. Keep a sharp lookout. He won't wait until midnight. I will make contact immediately and tell them to come ahead. What is your hurry? The boy knows I'm not an old woman. Every minute counts. Give me that gun. You're having a chance now. You'd better give up. When I need your advice, Mr. Kent, I'll ask for it. Until then, keep your mouth shut. Go ahead, Hans. Yeah, I go. Now I want to warn each one of you that from this moment on, I'm a desperate man. If I fail in this mission, my life means nothing. So you see, I have very little to lose. Don't move. If you do, it will be the end for all of you. But even as the message that will hurry the doom of the ship and all on board crackles through the air, Hug Flanagan, having made good his escape, realizes that the situation calls for quick action. Unwilling to trust even the captain, he has equipped himself with a length of rope and is determined once and for all to find out whether Kent and Jimmy Olsen are being held prisoners in the cabin of the bogus old woman. Clutching his coil of rope, he slips silently to the deck above the cabin, reaches the rail, and leans far over. That's the porthole right below. I see it lit up. All I gotta do is tie the rope to the rail and shinny down and take a look. Tub wasn't bouncing around the way it is. Oh, better hurry. That storm's gonna hit us soon. Here. There, she's tied tight enough. Can't take a chance of her slipping. Because if she does, I'm a dead pigeon. Okay, Flanagan, over you go. Wow. Almost lost my balance that time. Gotta be careful. Maybe I better tie the end of the rope around my middle. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Now to shinny down to that porthole. The wind's blowing. You can't hear me. This is gonna be a cinch. Just a couple of feet more. Hey, wait a minute. The porthole's open. I don't want to stick my foot through it. Better slide over a little. Nobody spots me when I look into the porthole. Gotta be careful. Easy now. Easy. Holy smoke. There's Mr. Kent and Jimmy and that white-haired guy and his daughter flying up against the wall. And that phony dame got him covered with a gun. What will I do? I can only bust the light and give Kent a chance to sock him in the dark. Yeah, but how am I gonna do it? I know. A rubber band and a nail. It's just as good as a bean shooter. Stop shooting us and hanging on to this rope. But I think I can do it. Up you go, flying it. While Pug climbs back up the dangling rope to go in search of a rubber band and a nail, the atmosphere in the cabin of the foreign agent grows more tense by the moment. Facing what he believes to be certain death, Dr. Barrington maintains a stony silence as he watches his daughter's wan, pale face for some sign of her cracking under the strain. Even Jimmy, accustomed to danger, seems to have given up hope. Only Kent is alert, for he realizes that unless a miracle happens, he will soon have to reveal his true identity and take matters into his own hands. Outside, the wind howls past the open porthole as the ship plows through a heavy sea to its doom. The storm's going to break soon, Mr. Kent. Sounds that way, Jim. I wonder what happened to Pug. I think by this time he'd have notified the captain. Don't waste your time thinking about it. I bet he didn't get away. I'll bet you did something to him. That's what difference does it make? It makes this difference. Thus far, all you've done is threaten the lives of innocent people. But I warn you, if any harm comes to that boy, you'll suffer for it as you've never suffered before. <laughs> Wouldn't you call that rather an idle promise? With you in the position you are in? I won't be in this position long. <laughs> Your confidence is very refreshing. It's beginning to rain. Yeah. Would you mind closing the porthole? 
Miss Farrington is getting wet. Not at all. Oh. Oh, I see. It's just a ruse to divert my attention for a moment. Close it yourself if you wish. No, wait. On second thought, I think it should remain open. Yes, leave it open. I may want to look out in a hurry. A little rain won't hurt Miss Barrington. She might just as well get used to being wet. How much longer have we to wait? Not long. Ten or fifteen minutes. Then what? Then I leave you to your prayers. I haven't bothered to ask, but I assume the plans are to torpedo the ship. Your assumption, Mr. Kent, is quite correct. Don't you think it would be the decent human thing to do to permit passengers and crew to get away in lifeboats? Unfortunately, that is not possible. There must be no survivors to tell how the ship went to the bottom. That you can well understand. I can understand only one thing. That men like you don't deserve to be called human beings. You seem to forget one thing. I gave you ample opportunity to avoid being a part of this. I warned you once before we sit and once after. What more could I do? What about Dr. Barrington and his daughter? They are enemies. It's no use, Mr. Kent. It's no use talking to him. Poor Pug. I'm sure something happened to him, or otherwise he'd have brought help. Easy, Jim. Only ten more minutes. Stay right where you are, Mr. Kent. Don't move. Now, listen. I don't know your name, and I don't care to know it. But I'm giving you one more chance to act like a human being. What you do with this ship is none of my business, but what you do with the people on board is my business. And I'm warning you, Kent. Don't try anything. Look, someone's at the porthole. Down on the floor! Get down! Orange tongues of flame stab the sudden darkness of the cabin, darkness that enables Clark Kent to become Superman and hurl himself bodily at the armed agent. But in a momentary lull in the storm, the sound of shots reaches the ears of Hunt, standing at the ship's rail. Alarmed, he runs along the deck, only to stop short when he reaches the spot where a rope has been tied to the railing. What is this? A rope dangling over the side. Someone climbing up it. Good thing I brought the flashlight with me. Ah. Skinny kid. The one who got away from me. You, boy. What? Don't bother climbing any higher. I'm going to cut the rope. No, no. And when I do, you will drop into the sea. Please, please. Too late, my boy. There. There it goes. Ah. Hug's plan to shatter the light bulb and throw the cabin into darkness seems to have worked. But at a terrific cost. Can Kent, even a Superman, save the courageous boy from the dark, storm-swept sea? Don't forget to tune in next time for the thrilling conclusion of this story with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. Oh, well, we've got a pretty good cliffhanger. Uh, Clark Kent able to change into Superman, but Pug Flanagan falling into the sea. So now we've got 11 and a half minutes for Superman to come in and wrap this up. I, I think Superman could do it in six minutes. Um, uh, so we're going to... Well, what is his name, that thing? We'll see in a moment. We got another hint. Uh, even though the nationality is not stated, um, it's pretty clear these are Germans because they say of the British citizens, they're the enemies. Hmm. Uh, like I said, we're, you know, they played some games back there then and didn't, weren't quite, well, these are the nationality of the people we're dealing with. Uh, we'll just tell them that these are German spies uh, who have... Uh, hijack this boat and uh, Superman's going to beat him. He's going to beat him and we're going to find out how he's going to do it next uh, or Wednesday in part nine of the nitrate shipment. So uh, get ready. Uh, we're going to have some fun. Got any comments, feel free to email me adam at adamsweb.us and uh, please cast your vote for us at podcastalley.com but from Boise, Idaho, this is your host Adam Graham signing off.